hi welcome guys and uh, today in this tutorial we will go through some of the basics of interrupts and events we will look at the nrf uh, module gpio te the te stands for the tasks and events this would be the first part of uh, gpio te and uh, i will make uh, the second part later on once i cover some other stuff so this would be enough uh, for the basics and uh, the interests are all about uh, handling the asynchronous events our microcontrollers basically interact with the external world through the help of interrupts so the most of these uh, come from hardware peripherals for example a timer reaching a configured period value or a uart that warns about the arrival of data all the micro pro all the microcontroller provide these features so let's see uh, how we can handle the interrupts interrupts are basically a mechanism for the microcontroller to perform multiple tasks and uh, uh, they help in dealing with the external events that are caused by some external peripherals in our cases uh, uh, it might be some button or it might be some external sensor and it's uh, sending an interrupt signal so our microcontroller detects that signal and uh, then it uh, generates an interrupt mechanism which basically saves all the current context of uh, the processor registers uh, in a stack and load the corresponding interrupt service routine uh, and uh, serve that interrupt interrupts can be detected in uh, the falling edge and the rising edge and we can also program our microcontroller in, uh, to detect the interrupts at falling edge and rising edge as well so uh, the falling edge is basically the logic uh, the conversion of a logic 3 signal to logic 0 and the rising edge is the conversion from logic 0 to logic 1 so basically when this transition is being occurred so during this time the interrupt is detected and uh, then it's served according to its ISR which is the interrupt service routine so another thing about the interrupts is uh, this uh, PPI module this is the programmable peripheral interconnect module uh, and it's uh, present in the Nordic NRF52832 and NRF52840 uh, basically it's uh, really useful uh, because uh, it can easily deviate all of the events uh, from uh, some interrupts to directly to the pins so for example if uh, some interrupt occur on a, uh, on a pin or some event occur on a pin and uh, we want uh, to turn on an LED or we want to change the state of a pin we can use uh, this internal connection and uh, it's going to uh, deviate our interrupt and uh, change the output signal uh, which uh, which is sometimes helpful as it as it's not going to need the processor it's going to process everything it itself so it's it's really useful and for increasing the overall performance of the embedded system so the interrupts are based on the priority levels uh, the higher priority means it will be served first and uh, the lower priority means the interrupt will be served later so in interrupts the interrupts are prioritized uh, from 1 to 7 1 being the highest priority and uh, 7 being the lowest so be careful with this uh, don't get yourself confused with the uh, 1 as lower priority interrupt so 1 is the highest priority and 7 is the lowest priority the beginners uh, make uh, this mistake a lot so be careful about that and uh, uh, also keep in mind if we are using the soft device the soft device is basically the bluetooth stack from the Nordic and uh, we can use it uh, together with our application to use uh, in some bluetooth communication and uh, once we finish the hardware side then we will jump into the soft devices and then we will look at the bluetooth communication and all the soft device configurations and uh, everything so for now just keep in mind that when we are using the soft device uh, there are three commonly priorities that are available for us that we can use which are three seven three six and seven so basically uh, the, all the other interrupts like 4, 5, 2, uh, 1, etc. they are 
all used by the soft device mostly and uh, we don't uh, have uh, a choice uh, we, we cannot choose them because the software soft device is using them let's consider a simple case in which an interrupt occurs and uh, there are two interrupts and uh, one has the higher priority which is uh, the interrupt A and the one uh, uh, with the lower priority which is interrupt B what happens is an interrupt is fired once the interrupt is fired we clear its flag saying that uh, our interrupt pending interrupt is being served so during this time another interrupt fires but our interrupt A has the higher priority so the other interrupt will remain in the pending state until our A interrupt finishes and once it finishes the interrupt B would be served so in case 2 if we have two interrupts and for example what happens is our A interrupt is being served and suddenly uh, a B interrupt occurs but the B interrupt has lower priority as compared to A so what happens is A is uh, continuously served until the A interrupt finishes and then the control passes to interrupt B and it starts uh, executing the interrupt B and uh, suddenly what happens is another uh, interrupt fire gets fired and uh, this time it's again A and uh, now A has the higher priority so what happens now is the A interrupt is uh, served and the B interrupt remains inactive uh, until the A interrupt finishes and then the B interrupt continues uh, until it finishes after the A is served so this is the very basic mechanism for interrupts and uh, so we have another case in this case once the A interrupt finishes uh, it's fired again and uh, the interrupt continues to execute uh, this usually happens if uh, the user forgets to clear the pending bit otherwise this interrupt is going to occur again and uh, you are not going to see any other uh, thing working and uh, this is usually usually due to the same interrupt being occurred again and again and uh, this is a very common mistake among uh, new users and uh, also uh, I think so this is enough for basics for interrupts and now let's see how we can program it in the real time and use it with our microcontroller okay guys let's start uh, coding so first of all I'm going to create a new project so go to my computer and then in the C drive we will go in the NRF SDK and then go into the examples and uh, then we will go in the peripheral and we will copy this project pin change int which is a pin change interrupt and uh, then go in the my projects and we will paste this here and let's rename it as interrupts gpiote so this would be the first part and in this part we will just go through the, some simple stuff and later on we will see uh, some more advanced stuff with this gpiote module for now let's go with the simple stuff and see how it works so open the this folder and then go in the PCA10040 because we are using NRF 52832. Go in the blank Sagar Embedded Studio and open this uh, project file. Once we open this project file, I'm going to erase everything because I don't think so. I need this code and I'm going to zoom in a little so we can see it clearly. Okay so first of all uh, let's go into the SDK config if you are using some other project and uh, you want to configure the GPIOTE make sure you have included this nrfx gpiote.c file okay so we are ready to start programming our interrupt so first of all let's define some LEDs first of all we are going to define an LED So it's connected to 17 which is LED1 and uh, 
Let's define the button. It's connected with the pin 13. And uh, now we have to go create this function, which is basically going to initialize our enter pins and uh, our simple GPIO, which is going to show the interrupt. So let's create this function. Void So first of all, uh, we are going to create an RAT code T error variable. So basically it's going to hold an error value and it's really useful for the debugging. So And next, uh, we are going to uh, initialize uh, the GPIO TE. Make sure that you initialize the GPIO TE only once. So let's initialize it. So first of all, I'm going to assign it an error value if something goes wrong when it's uh, being initialized. So it's going to save that in an error value and uh, then I can check what happened in the debug mode. So right now we have to initialize so I'm going to use this function gpite init and I don't have to pass any parameter to this function and then simply I'm going to use app error check and in error check I'm going to put this error code so the next thing we are going to do is we need to initialize the LED we can use the boats a file to initialize the LED or we can just simply use CFG config output and here I'm just going to give it an LED and uh, I think so I need to set the LED state to high because if it's high state it's going to be turned off so I will set it we are going to create a struct which is going to hold the values for the interrupt okay. settings so let's create that the structure is from nrf gpiot so we will use this structure nrf So basically this structure is to use to configure the input. So let's give it a name as in config and assign it because we are using the button and once we push the button the state goes from high to low so we are going to use this state sends high to low i forgot to mention that there are two modes for the gpio so if we put the true here it's going to use the our 16 megahertz clock and uh, if we uh, put false here it's going to use low speed internal clock but uh, using the low power clock is not going to be too precise so the next thing is we will use the in config and uh, set the pull up settings now we have to initialize the uh, uh, interrupt pin so first of all we need to create a handler so I'm going to create a simple handler function which is going to handle this interrupt so let's name it as handle and in this handle we have to give it and now here we can use simple toggle function
use LED here. So now we are ready and uh, we have to initialize our intro pane. To do that we will use we are just going to use same method error code equals nrf in init so this is going to initialize and here the first one is the pin to initialize so we are using so we are using button pin and and we have to pass it uh, struct and we have to pass it the function which is the input pin handle and make sure you don't put the parameters of the function here just the name is enough and the same method again we will check it once the pin is initialized we are just going to use nrf drive and we will enable this event so once the event is enabled our pin is ready to receive the interrupts so here we need to mention the pin and set it to true and we are good to go with this code everything is ready and let's see how our code works so I'm going to build the code go on the build click on the build and it's built okay once the code is built we will go in the target and uh, connect with the device make sure your jlink device is connected with the USB go to erase all and then download and now as you can see if I press the button and uh, the LED is turned on and if I press it again it's turned off so what's happening here is when I press the button uh, it's changing its state from uh, logic high to logic low and an interrupt is generated and in this interrupt event it uh, changes and uh, it toggles the LED so this is the basic interrupt I hope so you learned something new and uh, please uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel hit the like button if you like this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video